Hey everybody, welcome to the Full Moon Fibers Knitting Podcast. I'm Jessica. I'm Allison. Um, you can find me on Instagram as at j100designco. And me as Allison underscore makes with two L's. And together you can find us at, at Full Moon Fibers, which is our yarn company. Yes. Um, so welcome to episode five mm-hmm. of the Full Moon Fiber Knitting Podcast. Uh, we here we talk about knitting, crocheting, sometimes spinning, um, just sort of fibery things uh, where we share like whips and um, what's going on in our shops. We want to say thank you for joining us today. Um, for those of you who are returning viewers, thank you. It, for to those of you who are just found us, thanks so much. Um, if you like what you're seeing. You can um, subscribe to us down below. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Should we say hi to Papa too? Yeah, so hi Papa. Hi Papa. Um, we just like to say hi to him at the top of the episode so he doesn't have to watch the whole episode, but I think he likes to tune in and to see us yep. and what we're up to. So hi, and um, we think we'll be able to see you soon. Hopefully, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, should we start off with what, what we're wearing? wearing? Sure. Okay. So you can go first. Oh, okay. Um, I'm I'm wearing my um, my doodler. So uh, so this is by Stephen West, the doodler mm-hmm. by Stephen West, and um, just goes like this. It was an M Cal one year. Yeah, it was Mystery Knit Along 20, I want to say 2015, mm-hmm. in the fall. Maybe. Yep, because that's when I knit it, and I was a part of the MCAL okay. for once. And so this is my first MCAL with him, and my first pattern by him as well. And I found in my library that this is actually the third pattern I have ever bought on Ravelry. So um, I think that was like I had literally just joined, and then I found out who Stephen West was and his patterns and then I found out that he was doing this MCAL and so I um, I joined it and I knitted out of three skeins of, um, of Allegria by Manos del Uruguay and I do not remember the colors. I don't even think they, they make... They don't really name I them. Don't... Well sometimes they name them. I don't even think they make this one anymore. No, I haven't seen that one. It's... It's a... Uh, like purples and turquoises and oranges and then I just have like a really nice tonal darker orange and then the like tealy green um colorway as well it's a nice tonal and I was at school when I did this and I I don't even remember where I bought this yarn but I know I bought them all together Mm because I really like them and um and so I just had enough yarn where I was to be able to cast this on. So I, I cast on, I think a day or two after the first clue was released. Mm-hmm. And um, this was a really good learning shawl. I learned a lot. This was like my first time doing an I cord. Um, my first time like, cause you knit, you knit these, um, the shooting like rays, like the dotted rays, it's very similar. And then you pick up, no. But I think you still have some stitches here and you go sideways picking up as you go to knit the cable. This like twisted garter. It's very cable. cool. And then it ends with a big tail. And then you pick up all along all along the squiggle here all the way around so that you can do the um it's kind of feather and whoop, feather and fanny. Mhm. There's like little knit two togethers and then you do an I cord the I cord bind off which I did in the multicolored color and um, you'll notice that one of my rays is a different color and I think it's because I wasn't sure I was going to have enough um, enough to finish the little rays and I think that I read it on Ravelry or I'm not sure that people were in the comments of the MCAL that people were I don't know yeah if people were having trouble with their yardage or what but then someone had suggested well why don't you use to someone else like 
put a different color in in your rays or whatever. So then I was like, oh, and so I hadn't used the green yet. So I put the green in the second biggest one so that, so that I could do, do the last one in the purple. And then, uh, and then. Did you run out of yarn at the bottom or like here? Did you, did that then make you run out of yarn? I think so. And then. Yeah, cause then I had enough orange to do a couple rows at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to, I cord bind off in this. And I know I had um, an orange ball, probably about this big left over. And I've put it into like my granny stripe blanket and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure the other two colors I'm, I basically used up. And like looking at it, I think I was really tight knitter when I knit this because my stitches are so tiny. This is the tightest I cord I think I've ever done before. Yeah. Like it's, it's still got, it's still got I mean, it, give. Yeah. I think it looks really good, but it's so tight looking. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, and then I just wanted to say that this was where I learned to, yeah, so I learned the I cord um, and I learned from Ravelry, um, when you do an I cord and you have multiple ends, I learned that you can run your ends up the inside of your I cord, or you can um, carry your yarn up your I cord too, so that if you have to use the your alternating color like three rows later, and you don't want to cut it and make all those ends, you can just run that yarn up inside your I cord, and then you can, um, it leaves you less ends. You have like nothing to weave in at the end. And so I learned that, I think after like the second, first or second of the little rays here. Cause then I, you did the, I did an alternating orange stripe in there. And so then I learned to run it up this I cord. Um, yeah, so once I learned that, I was like, oh my gosh. Cause at first I was like, this is ridiculous. It says to break yarn like every three lines. Like yeah. I don't want to be weaving in all these ends. Mm -hmm. And then I was just going through Ravelry and I figured out how, that was like how I like learned Ravelry too is through this MCAL. Cause yeah. you could join the MCAL group and then you could read all the like forum posts or whatever and the comments and like, um, like it was good. Cause you knew like, okay, they would label it like okay clue one only like don't talk about anything else and then so then we go in there you could go in there if that's what you were working on and then there was all those comments and people were talking about the i cord and then someone said well if you do this and up the back like you can see in in here maybe a little bit i have the orange one tucked in the i cord yeah so then it, it just um tucks it behind the legs of the i cord and then yeah and so I would just I just ran the ends up until they were gone so it was probably usually like six or eight rows of just tucking it behind and then that's it that that end is I thought woven in enough so then I would cut it and then yeah it doesn't come out but anyway so I just wanted to sh say that this one I learned a lot of different techniques in and um yeah it was really fun I didn't I didn't keep up with the clues I, I think I was probably a couple weeks I ended up being a couple weeks after that I was able to finish it yeah um it's still good yeah but I, I really enjoyed it it was a lot of fun it was fun playing with these colors um this cable was so stressful but once you got the hang of it and like picking up the stitches and and yeah doing the cable it started to actually form into something and I was like okay I think I'm doing this right now and so then yeah then it turned out so it needs to be like washed and blocked again it's kind of gone back to it's gone back a little smaller but mm -hmm. yeah so I and I don't wear this one very often because I it, I mean I, I really like the colors but they're not something I would it's not something I would put together now yeah as a color combo but it is also again more like fall colors yeah so so yeah, so that is my doodler. I would definitely recommend it if you haven't already knit it. And it, there's so many different options with um, colors. Like I, I was looking at it today and I thought maybe that I would have done this one now if I was using the same three colors. I would have done this one as the rays and then done the orange stripes so that you would have seen the contrast a lot better. Yeah, yeah. And then save the purple for down here. Because mm -hmm. you can't really see the orange lines going through um, no, you can't. From when it starts up here. Kind of if you look at the yarn overs, if you look at the holes, then you can find the orange lines. Yeah. Yeah. 
but yeah other than that it's not very consistent and i like how on other people's it actually looks like a sun yeah and um yeah like sitting like this way it looks like a sun for some people with the the, the rays coming out so i think that's if i were given the three skeins of yarn these three skeins of yarn again that's how i would switch it switch up your order yeah to play with the colors it is better. an mcal too so you don't you don't know but yeah so that is my dotted nope <laughs> doodler <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah. I just want to say dotted rays. That is my dotted rays. I think you're wearing it. Oh no, you've got it. Something like that. That's how I've decided to put it together for today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it looks <laughs> good. So my doodler by Stephen West. It looks great. Thank you. I'm wearing my um, Soldatna by Caitlin Hunter. So it's just like this. And then it kind of sits like right where my, um, I'm a little awkward, right where my like high rise pants end up. Yeah. So um like belly button area no lower than belly button oh, okay. or no right where yeah belly button right yeah um it's about like 12 inches in the body um i really liked that doing this pattern it really uh keeps you engaged the one thing i would change is i would choose a better contrast with the oh yeah the green and the pink mm -hmm. so that you could see it in the arrows but so um the yarns i used for this are the gray is um, indigo dragonfly, as is the dark green, and then the light green is nylon tosh, and then the pink is hedgehog fibers. Ooh, nice. So I got the green and the gray at um, Toronto Zitter Knitters Frolic last spring, mm -hmm. and then I had the acid green and the pink in my stash already. So I just and put you, them together. They're all DK, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a DK pattern. Um, I had lots of, so I bought, um, two skeins in the gray and two skeins in the green because I wanted to make my, um, body oh. longer and to make sure. So, cause I think if the, but like, I don't have a lot of the gray left. It was like, I would have only needed to use two skeins of gray and one skein of green. Oh, or something like that for my size at the time, I think. But then, so then I just went with, I just bought both mm -hmm. um, two skeins. And I uh, might have had like half of a skein left over between the two balls I had left because I did alternate colors. But um, yeah, I really like this green because it's got yeah. like blues and grays in it. It's pretty. So it's like very um, multi-dimensional and then these little flea stitches so and then the other thing I did is that I made my um, st uh, steps or um, longer so that it was like the same as up here oh okay because I I think I might have made them like twice as high because I was concerned about um, proportion about length oh and length yeah so I was trying to I had lots of I had less gray left than I had green left, so I figured that I could stripe. I don't know what my thoughts were. <laughs> that, if I, yeah, that if I made that color work portion longer, I was using up more of one yarn, but less of another yarn. I yeah. forget what it was, but yeah. So that was my only mod, and it's going really well with my um, <laughs> my sunburn. It's. Um, <laughs> This weekend is the May 2-4 weekend in Canada, or the Victoria Day weekend, which is usually like the summer kickoff, and we spent the day outside yesterday. Yep, gardening. Gardening, um, helping my dad out with a home project, and then um, I sat in a chair and knitted while, when I wasn't needed, and so then I ended up, <laughs> ended up getting a sunburn on one arm. The other arm is not as bad. Class. But, um, this this is the first sunburn I've had in a long time, so it's not not too bad. Yeah, it's not bad. But uh, yeah, so we had a good time this weekend. Um, and yeah, that's my <laughs> still done up by Caitlin Hunter. I don't think I did anything else to it. Um, but yeah, it's really fun. Um, once you get to the like, it's I don't know. It's like oh, that's the other thing I did. The um, I don't know if I can say this, but I added an extra row of like plain stockinette in my flea stitches. Oh, okay. So 
in other people's sweaters, they're like closer together, but I dropped mine down by one row because I had so much of the green and I wanted to make my oh, body smart. body longer, yep. but I didn't have a lot of the acid and the pink. Oh. So I, but I had lots of the dark green. So yep. I, I added an extra row in between the charts. Oh, nice. So like, yeah, so, um, yeah. Oh, that's what I, I wouldn't mind that modification because then it's like one extra row with no color work. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's like a break row. Yeah, so I, I uh, yeah, so that's what I did too, to bump out, um, to sort of, and then because, and then that saved me from having to buy two skeins of each color, plus the those two skeins were both for my stash, and I don't think yeah. I would have been able to have found them anywhere else, and I wanted to cast on right away, so. Good thinking. Yeah. That's a good modification you did. Yeah, so if you're in the same boat and you want to make your body a little bit longer, you can just bump out your color work with your um, background color. Yeah. Or if you wanted to, I I love, uh, a lot of people have been doing sleeve length version, so like that would help spread out your yarn too if you wanted to make your sleeves longer, um, to just spread out the space in between your color work rows. And then, um, cause it would still look good with even more rows in between and yeah, more no, spread yeah. out. And then, um, yeah, you would um, save, well, like, yeah, save on yarn almost, but not really, but, like, you have less worry of yarn chicken, basically. Yeah, for the lesser, for the colors you have less gains of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Very nice. That's I, my nice thought now. All right. Shall we go into whips? Yeah, let's get into whips. Okay. You want to go first? Sure. So, um, a note about my whatever sweater. I'm not showing it this week. Right. I did do, I only got like five rows in on it over the last two weeks because I started something new. So I'm going to show that today. But, um, and I was also focusing on my uh, Yanis pullover. Yeah, you made some good progress on that. Mm -hmm. So that will hopefully get back into the rotation next week. Although now they're both in the same space. We'll see. I can't make any promises because now both sweaters are straight stockinette sweaters. Oh, so, so now you just go back and forth. Yeah, so it's just because like the end, like I would use my whatever sweater as a break from the color work on my Yanis sweater. So now I gotta. Well, now, now you use your stockinette and stockinette. Your whatever sweater as a break to play with color. That's true. And then you just work on your Yanis sweater whenever, even though it'll just be kind of more monotonous because it's just the same color. Yeah, it should get motivated. But then you're playing with really soft with cashmere it. yarn. Yeah, so. So it'll work both ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is the Yanis um, pullover by Isabel Kramer. Um, this is kind of handy to talk about because I have my Soldatna on. But basically I want to make mine the same length as my Soldatna. Mm. Uh, so a crop and but then make a longer sleeve of okay. what my soldana has yes so i finished uh, my project is being <laughs> held in a j henry design co which is me um large drawstring uh glitzy octopus bag So I'm currently alternating skeins through my stock net, but here is my color work all finished. So I'm really excited with how it looks. It's kind of low. Some areas is low contrast. Um, I'm using, oh, I'm dropping stitches. <laughs> <laughs> this happens every time. <laughs> um, Ah, there we go. Um, I like how it's sort of modeled a little bit because there's um, black in the background colors. Mm -hmm. So it kind of shows up sometimes. And then black is my contrast color. Um, in the original pattern, you're supposed to have, um, it calls for, for two colors, you can see it there, that sort of lighter brown, and then she's got a kind of black as well. Um, but I just used one color. And then it also 
works out well because you don't use a lot of the of both of those colors that you could get away with one skein for one color. Yep. Um, I have two skeins because I want to do uh, all of my cast on and cast offs in uh, black, which is our oh, yes. um, new moon colorway. So I'm using our yarn company, Full Moon Fibers yarn, and my um, main body color is Living in the Moment, which you can see has some black speckles. Mm -hmm. uh, here it is in skein form. A little bit of a messy skein. And this is on our Orbit. Yes. Heavy sport light decay base. Mm -hmm. And um, New Moon is my contrast color, which is our tonal gray black colorway. Nice. And yeah, so I'm excited to. Um, Keep knitting and stocking it. Um, I think the color work looks really clear, showing it on the like a good contrast on the camera. Mm hmm. Looks quite nice. I like it. Sometimes up here, it kind of in the little spots where there's only the one stitch separating. Mm hmm. It sometimes um, the black speckles sort of. Now I'm poking a needle through. <laughs> <laughs> I need to. Up, I think I need to. I will well, I get do. ready for another needle size. Yeah, I need to length. go up one more needle length, I think. Um, well, yeah, yeah. And then I'm currently on a 20 inch um, cord. Yeah, chow goo, and I'm knitting these on a 3.75 millimeter needle. Okay, so my next, my first whip is my uh, ache cowl by Hilary Smith Callis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not giving away any information. So it um, fits like that. And I was wearing one in the first episode. And so now I'm knitting another one. Yeah, first episode. And I'm using our Out of This World uh, mini set. Yeah, it's, so, uh, it's up here. I think it shows in the frame. Hopefully, yeah, these two guys up there. Yes. Okay, so, uh, oh, I forgot to replace my my stitch marker because I needed to use it for a part of the pattern. But I was where I was last time was like here, mm -hmm. and so I've knit um, so this now, much now. You've gone through one full color. I've I've gone through two colors, right? Because I had just joined oh, this yes. color, so okay. I last showed right here. Mm -hmm. So I've done this color, this color, and now I'm in my first um, of two green mini skeins. I've just done the alternating um, kind of uh, blending rows, and now I'm just on the green. So yes, so this green is the mm -hmm. one I am on now with the more purple um, sections. Mm -hmm. And then my last one is the green that has more yellow, uh, orange sections. So these are my three little babies of what is left over. So these will be perfect for, um, most likely they will go in my granny stripe blanket. Mm -hmm. And unless I decide to start another habitation throw <laughs> and then I can put them in there too. So I have those and then I'm using my, um, the sterling gray by us, Full Moon Fibers, on um, um, mohair. Did you say that the minis are single ply? Uh, they are single ply. Yeah, they're on our um, Cosmic Strain single, um, single ply things. Yes. So I am almost done then. So I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm on the decrease. I'm no longer increasing, I'm decreasing now. And you're on your second last color. And I'm on my second last color. So it looks like that. It really obviously softened up because of the gray mohair added to it. Mm -hmm. But in person, you can really still see like a great amount of color for each mini. Um, this one I think has been my favorite, which was this little guy. The bright, um, like kind of like mustard yellow with hot pinks and oranges and a little bit of purple. Um, this one was my favorite. And 
yeah, so now I'm in the green. I really like how the green's going together with the pink for the transition rows. And I've gotten like two rows done of just the green now with the mohair. So yeah, it's, it's, I was able to make a lot of progress um, in the last uh, few days. And I'm just, when I switch my color, I'm just um, holding it double while I knit, like I knit it through the garter tab and into the first couple stitches holding all of all of the yarn um like all technically four strands because mm -hmm. it would be the new yarn with the mohair the old yarn i don't know in the tail something like that um so that it's basically woven in i might like weave it in one more time and knot it and then i'll just cut them so my job is basically done except for i have not woven in the um, cast on yeah so I think that's it. It's a really simple pattern. It goes really fast. It's super, she, it's really well written. It's really easy to understand. She includes um, a really good diagram um, for you as well, like showing you um, uh, like where those stitch markers are supposed to go for, for in the end when you're sewing together. Um, she, after every section or every couple sections, she um, gives you a measurement that you should have that you should basically reach if you were to like lightly stretch it to like mimic blocking, mm -hmm. then it should, she'll say like, okay, like if you lightly stretch this edge, um, you should be here. If you are here, then you can move on. Um, and then if not, or if you'd like it a little longer, she tells you what to do. And, and I'm, this is my second time knitting it. And I, uh, I'm still getting like the, the measurement that she asked for. So it's really easy. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think it's really pretty. It's gonna be really nice and soft. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping to have it finished this week and maybe have it washed and sewn up for the next podcast. If not, it would definitely be the podcast after because it's it's I'm really really close to being done. So I've been really enjoying that knit, and it's almost done. So that means I get to cast on something else i think it looks awesome and i want to make one too <laughs> i say that about everything though <laughs> well i think this is like such a fun uh little like piece to have mm -hmm. i really like that other one um that i showed in the first episode with the colors and i think this one's going to be really nice with the added mohair I think I'd really like to make one with Surrey next time yeah. and, and maybe even just do it as like a solid color with Surrey mm -hmm. um, would be really nice. So I think, yeah, there's a lot of options. Like, And what is your new project? Okay, so yeah, my next project is a new cast on. I cast it on um, Thursday night. Yeah, so today's Sunday? Today is, yeah, today's Sunday. Okay. So it is... Um, in a um, large patchwork drawstring mm -hmm. by you by me and I so um, as you'll see in the shop news we've dyed a lot of minis this week yeah. so I um, dyed a set with this pattern in mind I'm just trying to get to the title page because I really wanted to knit it um, sorry it's in black and white but you can totally um, look it up on Ravelry or Instagram, but it's the um, Kalia wrap by Tammy Gore. And so it's sort of like a long arrow. And these darker um, stripes are mohair. And then these interior sections are all mini skeins. So it's 10 mini skeins and one skein of mohair. Um, as you will see, I chose to use our Surrey mm -hmm. because the amount of mohair you need is um, like is 240 yards. So that's like half of a skein of mohair. So I thought that, um, or like, it's like 60% of a skein. So um, I thought that I would use Surrey instead. Yeah, because Surrey's, what, 328 yards? Yeah, so it's a little bit less yardage. So it, I think it, like, I'll have less left over mm -hmm. than if I had used a full skin of mohair. So mine's very loud. The one that, she, um, the original, like, sample for this shawl is very, like, 
it's very nice. It fades and then the, co the color of mohair she chose is um, a nice accent. So mine will eventually not be so loud, <laughs> but it's starting off to be loud. Um, so I'm using a 10 skein set that will be available in the shop. You um, will, I don't know if I should go over it now. Sure. Okay. Um, we'll go over it now, but it's going to be available in the shop on Wednesday. So, um, and then my skein. Wednesday, May. We'll take there. May 20th. 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 <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm getting closer in. So it's just a, you, uh, cast on you make your triangle and then you start doing um making your straight edges and it's an i-cord um border which is really nice lovely what i love to do um and yeah so this first color is high vis and then as hot as it gets and then um pink experience and this main skein set is on our Nebula Soft Base, which is our two ply 8020. Mm -hmm. And then the Surrey I'm using is Personal Bubble. Ooh, nice. So yeah, so really excited. I'm on the third color. I finished this section, so now I'm gonna go do some more Surrey. Mm -hmm. And my next color will be um, Constant Uncertainty. So I'll just quickly run through. So my next color is constant uncertainty and then there we go sorry that's okay from there it's going to be um spring goddess very pretty and then encouragement And then uh, living in the moment. Shoulder just cracked. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> um, this one's a little creased. Marble. Mm, very nice. And then sterling. And then whoop, we got some ends. And then new moon will be my last color. And so then, so far. Yeah. So that's the rest of your shawl. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. And then I've been left with these little nubs after, nuggets after every section. So I'm just gonna put them in my crochet granny stripe blanket. And what I thought is I would put them in in this exact order. So oh, cool. it's like, a little memory section yes. of making this shawl. Of how your shawl went? Yeah. There's that. And then here is a personal bubble. Oh yeah, I'll hold some. So of course then, it has thread on it, ignore the thread. That'll be between each of the minis. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be beautiful. So my plan with this shawl is that, um, or something to keep in mind is that you start so you start with the solid section and then at the end what I'm trying to say is is that you do this striping oh so with then, the mohair with the surrey or mohair so that's why I started with the orange because yeah. I didn't want to have striped um purple and orange or well it would have been as hot as it gets Oh, okay. Purple and as hot as it gets together because I didn't really like that. So yeah. instead, my striping section will be Ooh. personal bubble and sterling, which I find that more agreeable and less busy. So that's why yeah. it's really loud right now. And then it'll turn into, it'll still be bright and colorful, but um, it won't, it would, I wouldn't have liked it the other, other way. way. Yeah. So you plan, you plan to hit. Yeah. So that's something to keep in mind if you're, if you choose to cast on this shawl is just to, um, like it might be loud in some sections, but then other sections could be like a lot louder yeah. or busier. Um, yeah. So then just like flip your, flip your set or your skein order, and then you might have something you're more amicable to. Yeah. So yeah. So very cool. I'm super excited. Anything with stripes I find very motivating, mm -hmm. like to 
be able to switch colors. So yeah, I'm gonna try and get more um, distance on that. It's knit on a four millimeter needle. Hmm. So it's very drapey. Yep. And then you get like a good size shawl, but only working a smaller amount of stitches. So you never have those as much as I don't mind. I don't mind the 600 stitch rows, mm -hmm. but they can get tedious. So you're, you're getting something that could be as wide and as deep as a 600 stitch shawl. Yeah. But you're doing it over less stitches. Nice. So. That's very cool. I like mm -hmm. it. I think I'm, I'm tempted to cast one on. Thanks. You totally should. It's a lot of fun. Yes, eventually. I'll put it. Um, so then that'll be a, a set that's available in the shop. Those yep. 10 minis will be put together. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, like a wide variety of uh, mohair and surrey available in the shop as well. So if you were interested in purchasing the set to do this shawl for, mm -hmm. um, then you can you can pick a color that you think would go well with the collection mm -hmm. out of surrey or mohair. Or if you're just interested in the minis, then, then the minis are there for you too. Hmm. Well, uh, my um, next um, what are they called? Whips <laughs> is in this one. You've seen this one now. Is my extra large drawstring project bag. Yes. By Jessica. Yes. So this is, I don't want to show it, is my, um, do you want me to hold the bag? Oh, sure. Thank okay. you. Oh, sorry. I just called you. That's okay. Is my habitation throw. And so I can show it because I have made another good chunk of progress. Yes. Uh, which is the right side here. Probably the side of this stitch oh, marker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so where the stitch marker is is where I was last time. Holy smokes. Oh, and I have ends that need to be woven in. <laughs> On the right Don't side. Don't mind that. Whoa, it takes up the whole camera now. So that's where I was. It's down here. And then I finished the whole yellow um, mohair. And now I'm into this bluey color. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm on the decrease. So here's my corner. Yes, and that's my mohair. Okay. So I'm on the decrease yes. end. I just, basically where we had, whoa. Make sure I'm not losing stitches. Okay, um, <laughs> where we were here, yeah. If you see, Okay, so here's the stitch marker, and mm -hmm. you go across this eyelet row. It's right here. And then the corner of the blanket is here at this eyelet row. So one eyelet row above. And I had been mentioning to Jessica last episode of how I was going to need help to figure out how much yarn I had left because I knew I had to start the decrease soon, and I wasn't sure when. Mm -hmm. And so then I went home, and I double-checked what I had left checked. yeah check. and then I messed myself up with the math and then I got really confused and then we figured it out and then we double checked it again and then I realized that I was basically right at the spot where I was supposed to start decreasing yeah. but I had just finished you were supposed to your first um so your ink no so you would start with your decrease row which would be um, you're, you would start decreasing on your next eyelet row. And I had just finished an eyelet row. And in that eyelet row, I had thrown in increases because mm -hmm. I thought that I was still increasing. So then I couldn't, there was no way I was going to rip back that row to change those increases to decreases mm -hmm. so that I could start my decreases. So I did this section of garter in here above the stitch marker. And then I just waited for this eyelet row and then I threw in my decreases so that I could start my corner. And so now I'm already that um, far above my decrease. So that'll be like my corner like that now mm -hmm. in my in my blanket. And um, so the uh, that I figure it's okay um, that I had to go another 10 rows before I could decrease because I, two of my um, balls that are coming up are 50 gram balls, but I'm only planning on using 20 grams. So in order to make up for the yardage that I lost in these 10 rows, um, I'll just use an extra one of either both or one of those minis. Mm -hmm. And then to accommodate for being low on mohair, potentially, because I might run out of mohair at the end, and my last mohair is a light gray, mm -hmm. my ache cowl 
is finishing with, yes. with, a, with a gray mohair and I'm gonna have lots left. Yeah. So I will just squeeze that mohair in to finish the blanket. Mm -hmm. So it'll be like nothing went wrong. It'll Yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. It'll all work out in the end. Yes, so I'm just gonna make some little fudges and then make it happen. Um, so yeah, so I'm not worried about it now. Um, so yeah, so there's my corner and then I've got the nice little blue. So and this I, is the oh, yeah, yeah. you're working on with right now. That's a, with the, a homespun house one. Sorry. But I can't remember. I couldn't find the tag for that one. It might be Mrs. Weasley something, but I can't remember. I couldn't figure out which tag was that one anymore. But yeah, so I just have a little bit of the blue, but I'm really happy about it so far. And um, so now I should have a nice section of blue because it goes from the gray, purple, darker purple, pink, yellow, and into the blue. And then it's gonna end in um, turquoise held with a gray mohair. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, awesome. Yeah. I was thinking this about- is, Is this your next mohair? Yeah, that's my last mohair. So this mohair is a little bit lighter than the sterling mohair that we're using, that I'm using for my egg cowl. I but almost wonder if you, I would almost say that you should hurry up and finish your egg cowl so that you could go to the sterling first before you go to that one. Oh, true. If you wanted to. I could, yeah. Ugh. Sorry. I could do that. Yeah, because um, I can't tell you the name of this. This blue mohair is... Also Rowan Kid Silk Hayes, mm -hmm. but this one was not named. So oh, it's not a no. My other two Rowans, the purple mohair and the yellow mohair, I used. They both had a name. Mm -hmm. I think it was Majestic and Summer. No, e Green. Eve Green? Green. Yes. This one they didn't name. Hmm. So it's just like this. Maybe it's an older color. Harry Winkleish. Yeah. Blue, and then yeah, and then the gray is my last one. Which is so, um, Sugar Bush Drizzle. Oh, Sugar Bush Drizzle, yes. Which I don't know if it's named either. It is, yes, it is. It's Rain Cloud. Oh, nice. Very appropriately named, but that's it. And that is a Canadian yarn company. Mm -hmm. um, funny thing is that where we grew up, we grew up in uh, like a, a suburb, I guess. I don't yeah. Know, a subdivision oh, called Sugar Bush. We'll call it Sugar Bush. Yeah. So, um, if anyone knows where that is, points to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I like the, I really like the, um, the blue. And I was thinking about it earlier that I could have, I could have ended up changing the, the way these colors go a little bit. Instead of going from the yellow into the blue, I could have done the blue over here into the purple. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I'm I'm happy with it. I think it's going to look really pretty. I think my favorite will always be this bright pink section. And then, but I'm, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the yellow too. Do you have any of that cor mohair left? Coral? Yeah, it should be in there. Okay. Maybe I'll steal it for something. I have quite a lot. Yeah. But I had to stop using hey, this because I was should, out of the pinks. You should weigh this. Yeah. Why? Weigh this. And then weigh your sterling when you finish your egg cowl. And then figure out how much you used on your egg cowl. And then see if this is enough to do another <laughs> egg oh. cowl. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I guess I will do that. Yes. Because if you did like a bunch of pinks. <gasps> like five pinks. And then use this as the mohair. That would be really nice. Okay. Okay. That would be really pretty. <laughs> I'm like... Or the boss. I can this use, is what you're getting next. I have um, a lot of hedgehog in stash. I could use like one of my hedgehogs that is more like the creamy yes. base with just some speckles. Definitely. And use a full skin. And then just use, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my habitation throw. And it's I'm beautifully. Oh, thank you. And I'm thinking of uh, actually starting another one. I just don't know what I would do yet. So I don't know if I would wait. To do to some more, it. to have some more scrap yarn, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. maybe another mini skein set purchases in your future from a different yarn dyer. Yes. Like a, or a cat sandwich order. You could, I was totally thinking that with the habitation throw, what you could do is eventually is to make it more of a rectangle and not a square. Like once you get to your corners, then to always 
um, increase on one side and decrease on the other side. And then that would make it go biased and then oh. decrease on the one side. And then you, you would have a, a biased rectangle. So if you could have like a longer throw. That, yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would understand how to do that. You'd have to write it out for me. Yeah, I'd have to write it out for myself too. Yeah. Like look at something that's knit on the bias and then apply that to that pattern. Yeah. Or just knit longer. Yes, yeah, so you have one. a bigger square. Yeah, have way more yarn to use. Mm -hmm. Because I am kind of wondering how... Like, if you use a 24... How I'm going to use this. Like, is it something if I have my legs curled up and then you kind of put it over your lap? Or if it's more like you kind of just wear it over your shoulders? Even, well, yeah, because, like, you could fold it over your legs. You could fold it in half and wear it over your shoulders. And then you're yep. getting two layers. Or you could just have a square over your lap and have your feet out. Yes, yeah. If you have, like, socks on and your feet aren't um, cold. Yeah, that could work. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually, my I was thinking of... I, my last year, I got the um, Cat Sandwich Advent Calendar, mm -hmm. and we started a Dust of Snow Wrap yes. by Helen Stewart, yes. and um, that one, because it's a 20 gram, 20 gram minis that we use, mm -hmm. you have quite a, a decent amount, not like a big amount, but like at least half, yeah, the, you, half the... No, half. Maybe have like... Eight grams? Eight grams left over. But I'll have sure. 24 of those. So then That's true. I could use all of those and put them into another wrap mm -hmm. or throw um, and then just substitute with some other minis as well. Yeah. And then that would make that into a blanket. But first I have to finish my dust of snow wrap, <laughs> which I'm going to start working on again. We'll, we'll have to show ours. Okay. Well, should we go into... Um, oh, should I do... Do you want to do that or do you want me to show my quick... Oh yeah, so you things? do you do your FOs basic well technically we're both sort of doing FOs. We're just doing oh, that's true. FOs of different crafts. That's true. Well we uh, we have okay, so I have an FO um that's by me, and oh. then we have an FO that is done by our mom. Yeah. And she knit it for us. It's for her. She yeah. knit it for herself, but she knit it using our yarn. Yep. Yeah. Um so do you want to explain it? Sure. So, um, like a pattern favorite in our family is the Morning Walk Hat by Monarch Knitting. Um, it is made originally, I think, with holding two wool folk fingering weight yarns together. Yes, the tinned and... I think they're both the same, but the idea is that you hold one, like white and a black together. Oh, like to get two, the marled Two effect. high contrast yarns together to make yeah. our marled effect. So I've knit it before. Mom's knit it twice. Three times. Now three times. And then... And I have a project bag holding minis <laughs> that will eventually be it. Yeah. They are designated for a morning walk hat, but I haven't cast it on. So um, this is our mom's. So she actually switched it up this time and she used DK and mohair together. When normally you hold two skeins of fingering weight. Um, so she used our Galactic Dreams uh, DK mm -hmm. on our DK base. And then she used Encouragement on our Mohair base. Yes. Um, the awesome thing about this hat is that it's one by all over, one by one rib. So if you're up for that, then um, go for it. And she loves one by one rib. Mm -hmm. And I do, too, like, once you get into it, I really like it, too. But the great thing is that it can, like, fit anybody because it's totally stretchy. So it's a great gift knit. And then you're holding, you use um, a three millimeter and a three and a half millimeter, I think is recommended in the pattern. Mm -hmm. And then I use a 3.25 and a 3.75 on mine. Yep. But like, so you're holding, you're making a really thick, plushy hat because you're, because what I'm trying to say is because you're making like a, a plushier fabric because you're using such a small needle, yeah. but then it also doesn't matter what your gauge is because your yarn is so big in comparison to your gauge size. Like, you know, like they, it's going to equalize itself out because okay. you're using such like thicker yarn on a small, like on a way smaller needle. Right. But it, yeah, so it makes like a kind of impenetrable knit that's super warm um mine's made out of a bunch of mini skeins and then what made it go by so quickly was that I was constantly able to change colors and create new marled 
um, colorways by switching my menu screens. Yes, like the one that she knit for me too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, so she uh, out of DK and mohair and she did a fantastic job. Yes, look at the cr She did a really good job on the crown. Mm -hmm. She's getting better and better. It Oops. looks really nice. And it, yeah, yeah, so this is definitely. a skein of our... Yeah, so we're going to have it back in stock this week. Galactic Dreams on DK. Galactic Dreams. So it's just a lot, lot, a lot of fun color mixed in with black. Mm -hmm. and, and some black speckles and, as well. Yeah. And then here's the rest of um, her cake. So she's got a good little chunk left. Yeah. And a little chunk of mohair left. Mm -hmm. So she can... Um, put it into another project. Yep. And that is that. That's that. And my last thing is, um, this is partly why I don't have more knitting done. Mm -hmm. Is because of, I was working on this. Um, so last weekend was Mother's Day and we filmed our Mother's Day special. And um, thank you to those who watched it and yes. commented. Yes. Um, and... So I was uh, busy doing doing a pile of um, dishcloths <laughs> for my mom um, for Mother's Day, and I did them all in um, like a spring um, colorway. I like this one mm -hmm. a lot, and then uh, like a golden yellow, and then a pink. Uh, it's like lightly speckled. It's like yeah. an overall hot pink speckle. So it almost reads just hot pink. And then this one is like an orangey, pinky, yellow speckle. Yeah. And so I knit her a pile of dishcloths because um, this is something that I, one of my first things I ever knit for her, I believe, was dishcloths. And then every once in a while I would give her a new pile and she hadn't asked for any in a while. And then um, a few weeks ago, she mentioned about how she needs a new pile of dishcloths. And I ordered this yarn from True North Yarn Co., one of our local uh, yarn stores in Barrie. And um, I just went online and they were offering contactless um, pickup. So I went and uh, these are all Estelle Suds. Um, so it's Estelle is the um, yarn brand and then Suds is the line. Um, they have, um, especially on True North Yarn Co's website, they had quite a, a selection of Estelle yarns for um, dishcloths because this is 100% cotton. It's very similar to the Bernat Handicrafter cotton, which is what I um, normally use, um, which is something that's like readily available at like Walmart or Lens or Michaels and stuff. Um, but I actually had none in my stash. I usually have a ball or two kicking around. So I ordered I ordered these and she usually prefers a lot darker colors, but I got distracted. Those are nice. <laughs> I got distracted by these nice spring colors, summer colors. So I thought these would be nice to have um, in the kitchen. And so, so I um, whipped up this pile in like, I think I had like just under a week to do it, so. Yeah. And this, this pattern was a different pattern. Uh, this one, I normally did one that is on the back of the Handicrafter cotton ball, um, yeah, ball band. Label. They there always you give you patterns. And so one of them was for, I've seen a couple different dishcloth patterns on the back, but one was like a really simple, easy one that I used to do. But I, and I thought I had it memorized, but I couldn't remember what it was. So then I just typed in um, knitted dishcloth pattern. And the first thing, cause I was trying to find the Bernat one. And then the first thing that popped up was a YouTube tutorial by, it's very pink knits. Yes. Yes. Um, she has a huge YouTube channel. If you've never um, checked her out, she's very good for, and anything. anything tutorial wise like yeah. it, i'm pretty sure her purling video is a video i watched like eight years ago when i was trying to learn how to purl and i could not understand it from a book and then i figured out oh why not put it on youtube and so um she's great she has a lot of good tutorials very simple and so she had a um she was teaching how to do this um style with an eyelet um border and it's a free pattern that's been around for a long time. And so she just gave a tutorial on how to do it. 
and um, I did mine to uh, 50 stitches across, increase to 50 stitches, and then I start my decreases. And so she gives you the whole tutorial, plus she has it on her blog, she said. Um, so, because in the, in the tutorial on the video, she, I'm pretty sure she didn't, she didn't tell you how to finish it, like how many, how far to decrease down. So I just made it up on my own. I just went down to like, I don't know, five stitches or something and it worked out perfectly. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's on her blog too of what to do. Um, but it's a really nice pattern. It's super easy. Once you have it in your head, it's super easy to understand. I'm sure a lot of people have knit dish gloss. They're a nice, um, simple, quick knit. Um, I did mine on five millimeter um, needles. And yeah, went to 50 stitches. Um, because the, the, the number changes all the time. So, mm -hmm. Sometimes I see 43. She said 49. I've seen like 46. It's somewhere. It's always somewhere in the 40s. And I don't know if you'd really want to go any higher than 50 um, yeah. with, with, depending on the size needles you're using. So I just have a whole bunch of little, little balls left over. And my plan is to eventually maybe knit some more. So I just have a whole bunch of little balls and I thought I could do a scrappy version and just knit each one until it runs out kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I have like a shocking amount of this one. And then the rest of them all pretty much finish the same size. Huh. Except for this one would probably be bigger, but this is the same. But there was um, a join here. And I did not want that in my dishcloth. So I cut it out. Um, oh, thank you. <sighs> And so, um, yeah, so I'm going to do a scrappy version and eventually knit some more. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll do what she wanted, which was darker colors for mm. the fall mm. and then do that. But it was a fun knit. It was nice. And yeah, so that took up my time. So now that I'm not doing that anymore, I have more time to um, work on my other projects. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, your stuff. Yeah, so I, um, my FOs are spinning FOs. Mm -hmm. So I had some time this week um, to do some spinning. Uh, this skein, I forget who this fiber is by, but so this skein is like black, pinks, and purples. Um, I'm pretty sure I picked this fiber up at the Purple Sock in Coldwater. Would it be um, like a Malabrigo then? No, it's it's like an indie dyer, mm. but I forget what the name was. Um, it was like in my stash bag of hand spun. So technically, I didn't spin this this week, but it was in my um, stash bag of hand spun, and I realized it hadn't been washed yet. Mm. So um, that's what I did for this one this week is I just washed it, and then um, now it's ready to go. It's pretty. So I really like that one. I think I might look for in the future is more um, to add to spin is more colorways that have these sort of solid black sections that make this really nice um, barber pole. Yeah, that's very so. nice. And then the next one, this one is like, it was a rainbow. Um, braid and then uh the way i split it up is that it like um the way that it was dyed it ended both ends ended at the blue and then the orange was in the center so i just ripped i split it in the center at the orange and then split the skein in half and then spun one bobbin with one half of the braid and then spun the other bobbin with the other half of the braid and then made sure that i always um, started the bobbin off with the same color so that when I applied them together the two blue ends would be together and so then it makes kind of like a, a gradient rainbow yeah it's pretty so if you so this one's um, washed it's hanging pretty good um, but yeah so if you see it's kind of like a, a bit of a stripe so 
What, what are you gonna knit with that? Like a single a single skein project? Um, I don't know. I just like to stash my hand spun skeins until I figure out where what I want to do with them. Give one to me. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> um, I'll take this one. This one I'll take. I'd be happy to have this one. So this one is a um is a koiku braid of oh. merino. It's like super soft and then I don't know, it's like kind of like a Oh wow. That is soft. Yeah, and it's like this is BFL. Yeah. I know. So if you feel that one. Yep, yep. And then this one. So Is that like a hundred percent something then? It must be a hundred percent superwash merino, probably. But it's so soft. Yeah. And then it's a bit thicker. So I'd say this is like a worsted Aaron yeah. in some sections. And then like I still am not the most consistent spinner. But um That's what keeps it interesting. Yeah, that's probably sport or DK. But it's hand spun and that's the whole point of it. So you got that at the Quagu tent sale? Yes. Um this last August. Very nice. I basically have uh You got a couple there? I got three skein three of them. Mm -hmm. And I I think I have like I really enjoy spinning the Koigu um Koigu braids. So I always try to stock up whenever we go. Yeah. But I have two left. I bought three and this is one of them. I have two more left and then I'm out of Koigu again. So um yeah. I'm excited. Like hopefully I can get some hand my hands on some of that. Yeah. Uh, again this year. Yes, fingers crossed. And then this one, so I yeah, so I spun this over the last two weeks, like both of the singles and plied them together, and it's been washed. And then this one I just plied last night, so it hasn't been washed yet. And then there are some like very thick sections, but um that's okay. And then that's an end, so that's why that's so unwoven. But um it's kind of like a a minty and then it's got some sort of magenta red um colors in there. And is that a North nope. No, so this one is by uh, the Loving Path, mm. um, out of uh, Ontario. Um, she comes to a lot of the same festivals as us. So I think I picked I picked this up at Kawartha last year. Mm. And it's very soft. Yeah, soft colors. Mm -hmm. So I've been working on my spinning is because I kind of had this idea of making a throwback pullover. pullover. Is it a throwback over or oh a throw over throw over? There we go. Um, so originally I had thought I would do, um, this one and then the pink skein that I showed, um, two episodes ago, the, the Malabrigo pink one, put that one in the middle and then put this one at the end. Mm. And I was kind of looking through of trying to find a worsted weight yarn, um, through various things of, um, that I could use for my main color in the sweater. And then I ended up remembering that I had, um, I have seven skeins of Cascade 220. Oh, right. And I had their gray color at home that I had originally for another project that I don't think is going to work out. So, um, I'm going to take those skeins and use them for this project. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I started looking through projects online and it's very much that your color work one, it fades, which it would have with this three skein combination. Yeah. And two, it's like there's a con a lot of contrast between your color work and your main color. Main color. So if you think, so then that's why I kind of ran into this dilemma. If you mm -hmm. think that the, my Cascade 220 is very close to Sterling, but it's more of a heathered colorway, that these two together, there would have been no contrast. It would be beautiful, but no contrast. Like it would have been great if this had been the middle color. Because yes. then I would have been able to have sandwiched, like, like a dark, like a color and a color after it that would have provided contrast. But, um, so now I've come up with a different plan. Do you have something else in your stash that you could do that that could make that your middle color? No, because this would, I guess, I don't know what, what would it. It would be like almost natural. Oh yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so I came up with a different one last night. I found. I had um, two Malabrigo Nube braids that um, that fade. Um, 
till then. And then I have another Koiku braid that sort of fills in the end gap. Yeah. So I'm thinking that those three oh. will become my colorway. So, I, so already is that it? Yeah, I think that's everything for whips and FOs. Um, I have been wanting to. Well, he like literally just published this. Like yeah, last, last Friday. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> But this is the Triangle Parade by Stephen West. And so you need, um, you can either knit from stash or, and use a whole bunch of colors, or you can do, he recommends five colors. And so I'm going to do five colors of our yarn on single ply. And so I have, I have six colors picked out and I was wondering if maybe, if you felt like it, you could comment and say which of these two that you prefer for the combination to help me out. <laughs> yeah. So, so she has, it would be, she's set on four colors and then it's just one color that she's not sure of which one she wants to put in. Yeah. To so make it five. I'll show you my four colors. Um, so one is Tonka. Do you want me to hold them after you? Oh, um, sure. I can hold them up in the background for you. And then encouragement. So these are all in our classic strings. Nope, cosmic. Cosmic <laughs> strings single two. Yeah. Our new um, Canadian single ply base. Milled, yeah. Canadian milled single ply base. And then marble. So a nice speckled colorway. And then luminescent, which is um, neon yellow. Shows up better in person. And so that or just is, back here or back here. Yes. Sorry. Okay. So those are the definite four. Yes. Then for the five, I either want to do this one I saw first and then I accidentally looked at the yarn wall again and saw another option. So my first option <laughs> is, um, purple blur. So it's like a lilac, um, purple. Mm -hmm. So I think this looks really nice. So that's option one. Here we can also do like this. Yeah, to it looks meld good. it in. Sandwiched in there. Mm -hmm. Or option two, I will take. You will have to do one it away. Yeah. <laughs> option two is personal bubble, so it's like an electricy purple, pinky purple. Purple. purple, pinky purple. So you put that in there. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I don't know. Also though, yeah. I really like all six together. <laughs> okay, so we need help. Yeah. So this is, this is my favorite. Yeah. I feel like um, this one's like a modern, I don't know. It's just more speaks to me, but I do like purple blur because this kind of reminds me of like. It's more watery. I think it's more like a boardwalk. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just kind of reminds me of like boardwalk. That's what I was going to say. Like, it's like beachy. Like skater or like an 80s like faded tank top, you know, and then they have like, like the, a tie dye. And then you know how they have like the writing that like. Oh, writing okay. That yeah, like yeah. 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 Okay. Well, how about we'll put it on the screen now. So this one that Jessica's holding will be option A with the personal bubble. So that's option A. Option A. <laughs> okay. Now put this away. <laughs> And then I'll put on the screen now that this is option B. So if you feel like commenting, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, so option A or option B. Yeah. So um, so yes, if you feel like helping me out with this, this stressful dilemma I have put myself into, I would greatly appreciate it. And then I will have it cast on. I will wait for like, I don't know. 24 hours because I really want to cast this on. I'll wait for like 24 hours after um, say you're we going put up the video. Okay, yeah, because I don't want to be like by Tuesday, but then the video may not be up by yeah a Tuesday. So yeah, so I'll wait a day or so, and then hopefully there will be some comments telling me what to do, and whatever has the majority, I will then use and cast on, and okay. I'll show you on the next video. Okay, so thank you in advance if you vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now we're going on to shop news. Yes. So yeah. what do you do you want to do yarn first or Jay Hendry first? Um let's do Jay Hendry. But we're um so so this so last time we had two separate updates for yes. the businesses, but this time we're gonna do it at the same time. So um this Wednesday, May 20th at 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 
will be our next full moon fibers slash J Hendry Design Co update. And it's all on the same website, um, jhendrydesignco.ca. And so if you're interested, you can check it out. And this is, we're gonna show you what's being put up. Andrew. One more thing about the website that I wanted to say is that we have a lot of stuff on there right now. So to make it easier to find the newest shop update, we now have a, I think it's like latest shop update or new in the shop or something category on the website. We can put that in our link tree in our bio on Instagram too. Yeah, definitely. under Full Moon Vibers. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also wanted to say that we are shipping right now because of um, COVID, we are shipping only within North America, right, of yes. Canada and the U.S. for now. And then hopefully once things get back to whatever the new normal will be, um, then we will be able to open up international shipping at that time. So, and another thing about shipping is that we currently have, we've never talked about it, but yeah. um, since we've been social distancing, we've had um, $10 flat rate shipping for North America yeah. um, with tracking. So if you're curious about uh, where your package might be. Um, if you did not receive an email from either me or Canada Post with your tracking number on it, then just send me an email and I can send you your tracking number and you can check out where your package is. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so let's get into shop update. So do you want to do, we're doing Jay Hendry first. So yep. excited. Okay, so um, one of the things that's going to be added to the shop this week are tiny pouches. So they're a really great little notions bag that'll fit into any of my bag sizes because they're so small. So they've got a little gusset and they're roughly this big. Um, this one is my personal one. So I can show you what it fits. So it has um, my little um, darning needle wood turned darning needle keeper by Moose Hill Woodworks. Um, okay, and then it has, um, these will also be in the shop. I have a few pairs of these left these like unicorn. rainbow unicorn scissors. And then for some reason it's got a stitch marker attached to it. And then um, my tape measure, really old fabric laying tape measure. And a little cable needle. Nice. And then the bottom of it is filled with stitch markers. Ooh. But yeah. Show it all going back in. Okay, so the stitch markers are in. So normally this is an item that is only available at shows. Mm -hmm. um, so Jessica is now putting them up on the website since we can't be at shows. Yeah, they're a great little throw in to your cart. Um, like I said, they fit into any project bag. So even um, the mini drawstring yarn bowls, these will fit in here, whether on top or underneath your cake. Uh, and then you can just have all of your stuff that you need for your project. They're um, good to have like one in each bag if you're mm -hmm. lucky enough to have that many tape measures i can never find oh, enough I can never. tape measures or scissors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so then you can put one in each bag or have one that you transfer between each bag when you go um they're good as like a coin purse yeah um lipsticks or lip chaps would fit in here up to uh the zipper is three and a half inches in length but uh, if you like tilt, you can probably get something that's like roughly four inches long in there. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and they come in lots of little like one of a kind prints um, and there'll be lots of them available in the shop. Very nice. Okay, so uh, I have a bunch of- um, Plus scissors. Oh, and yeah, and then there'll be lots of like little um, cross stitch scissors available as well that fit into tiny pouches. Yes. They're all like- yeah, they're very, they're very cute. They're the Kelmscott design scissors, if you're familiar with them. Um, so this week is going to be the XXL bag update. Uh, these were originally intended for Knit City Montreal, and then all of my shows after that as well. Um, but so there, it's a great deal to get these um, if you buy these now and get ten dollar flat rate shipping on them because they're very big. So you're saving a bit of money that way. But, um, so this is my XXL project bag, drawstring project bag. Um, it's got a, they, they are stored flat, so it's a little, but they have a big base on them. Yeah. And then they have, I'm just gonna show off the one and then we can show the rest of them flat. They have these pockets, ooh, <laughs> these pockets on the inside. And then two of them are like pencil sized pockets. 
that could fit like a crochet hook or something so that it's just not or your pen so it's not floating around in your bag and you can't find it and then it also the pockets are big enough that if you fold your pattern in half ha your half size pattern will fit will fit so yeah so it looks like that on the inside it's nice and big it's like a little barrel yeah um this is the bird print my favorite is this chubby blue jay mm -hmm. at least i think it's a blue jay it looks like a blue jay mm -hmm. could be i'm not sure if there's another and then this guy on that side yeah and they look like they're painted Mm -hmm. um it's a very far apart print so i think this will probably be the only bag that this print appears on and then they have this uh handle on the side of them so when you cinch up your bag which when it's fuller it looks better then you can carry your bag from the side or you can just grab it by the handles yes i like to carry mine from the ropes or yeah by the ropes i mean and then um the more you use it through time it's easier to open and close yes so those that's the birds and then have the flamingos Whoa. and then they have like a rainbow pixel lining very nice um this like intarsia sweater and like color work socks and then there's this one, which is like these forest guys, and the bear is wearing a colorwork sweater. And mountains. And mountains, and then the little fox. So cute. And then I have the uh, digital print. Beautiful. Red floral. Okay, and then um, there's gonna be lots of them, but I just kind of picked my favorites. This favorites. So then I also have this uh, very realistic underwater one and then it's got this uh wave print on the inside very nice and then this is the i have some xl size as well which is the one that allison's using for her habitation throw all the time mm -hmm. so um i have the the sweater print again with the socks with this brown very nice and then i have the little forest one again this one just has foxes um <laughs> with his socks on yeah he's wearing his there we go he's wearing his socks and then it's got the black green metallic print and then it's just got this uh navy liner on the inside very nice and then the um digital flowers mm -hmm. the dutch impressionist one comes in a xl as well very so, nice. and that one has the navy circles on the inside as well there's there's doubles in some prints um if they are if the doubles are really different from each other then i will post two separate listings so that you can see exactly what you're getting on your bag very on good, to good. shop noobs for full moon fibers all right so we have lots of different uh, mini sets mm -hmm. some of them are one of a kind and then some of them there's a couple available and then some of them there's a couple more than a couple <laughs> <laughs> there's like four available <laughs> so our, a bit of a better comment is that it's a 75 25 and it's a four ply base so it's super strong with those four plies mm -hmm. um and yeah all these sets are with five giving you 100 grams which is enough to do a pair of socks yes or an a cowl or something like that. Weight hat mm -hmm. a sock hat hat or something so this is our, this is this first set here. So it has, um, this is our high vis. So it's a neon orange. And then this is uh, living in the moment on minis. And then luminescent, our highlighter yellow and marble. And then this one is a really nice, like greeny black, um, moody color. So they look really nice together. Back here, let's see. So, um, either to be used together or separated. And then this one is um, this time you have encouragement, and then marble, and then golden larch. Well, something similar to golden larches. Yeah, it has some speckles on it. Yeah, this one has speckles on it. And then um, living in the moment again. And highlighter or high vis highlighter orange. <laughs> so then uh, I really like this set. It's very pretty. 
Mm -hmm. I like that one too. So these are all good, we thought, um, for like if you're doing a habitation throw or socks, like we said, or if you want to break them up for different projects, like use them for heel, toes, and cuffs on different socks, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. And um, so these are all still on the Comet sock base, the 7525. This is the last one here. Whoa. So um, this one is Peony and then Starfish. And then um, Tonka, this middle here. This is Walnut. It's like a lighter brown, well, middle brown. And then this is our Sandy Loam, which is a really nice, dark, rich brown. So this set together. This set together is um, really pretty. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Yeah. And then we go into um, so Jessica showed her set of 10 that she's using for her wrap by Tammy Gore. So here it is again, kind of all held together. But it's basically sort of our favorite or like top hits sort of of um, colorways mm -hmm. that we have currently off that we are currently offering. Um, so it's kind of a great way to sort of try things out if you want to. It's a good mix of like tonals and speckles mm -hmm. that we have on our um, larger skeins, on our full skeins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, and it's five and five. So it's five speckles and five solids. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's a good set. Yeah. So that one will be put together as a set of 10. Mm -hmm. And then I dyed, um, it's like sort of a set of 10, but I've broken them into two sets of five. So they would work together separately or, or really well together as well. So this is the first one. This is the lighter kind of version. So um, I really like this one. I like that one too. So this That's is- That's very similar to what you want to do for your boardwalk. <laughs> or, well, not boardwalk. <laughs> it is. But uh, triangle. My triangle parade yep. shawl. Oh my goodness. I'm reading, I'm just, clearly these are the colors I want to work with. Mm -hmm. um, so this is encouragement. Mm -hmm. Encouragement. And then peony which is a really light um, pink color. And then Luminescent, our highlighter yellow. Then this is Starfish and Tonka. So these are all the set that Jessica just showed the of the 10 and these ones that I'm showing are now on our Nebula. Oh, so it's right. our 80-20 base. And it's a two ply. Yes. And it's very, um, it takes color really well and it's very squishy. Oh yeah, super squishy. And very soft. Yeah. So 80% superwash, 20% nylon. Yeah. So still really good for socks, whatever, but whatever you like. And then this is the second set. And so it is um, golden larches, and then sterling, high vis, meadow, and heirloom rose. So it's um, a bit of a darker set but these are also colors I've been really drawn to lately. And so I figured they're good. I'm going to attempt. They're good um, on their own. And they're, these two sets are good together because they're very complementary, And it's almost like one set is light tones and one is dark of a lot of the same colors. Mm -hmm. And there's no two of the same colors in these sets. Yeah. We kind of had that epiphany yeah. to not have crossover. So you could rework this into like um, almost a bit of a fade. Mm -hmm. Or like a rainbow. Or if you can see a better way of putting it together. But that's how I would put it together probably. Mm -hmm. So then, um, then it turns into a nice set of 10. Do you have names for these sets? I do not. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah. I will, I will um, figure out a name. Oh, I, now I really like it as a set of 10. It's like a crayon box. That's what I was going for. I wanted it to look really good together and I wanted it to look, both of them look good on their own if you only wanted five. Yeah. So then these together as a set of 10 would work for Jessica's shawl as well. And this is what I had thought I would do would be to put these two sets together and I would probably hold it with a really light colored um, Surrey. Yeah, or even a natural. Or a natural, sorry. Uh, we could put some natural up 
in the update this weekend. Yes. We can do some natural mohair and natural surrey as well if yeah. you want to choose that as a uh, neutral to yeah. go with a set. Yep, that would work really well. So that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm quite pleased with this actually. Yeah. So, so yeah, so then those two sets are available um, separately or you can purchase them together and I will um, give them some sort of a name, but um, it should be obvious once you see them. Yeah. There'll be two different sets. So, yeah. Uh... <laughs> These are my 10 favorite colors right now. If you can have 10 favorite colors. Yeah, so then the colors that will be available on Surrey oh, are yes. um, Personal Bubble that I used for my Kalia Wrap. Yep. And New Moon. The New Moon is a little bit lighter because it is Surrey, so it just kind of always has a washed out effect. Yeah. And then um, we're going to have more Galactic Dreams on DK, mm -hmm. on our Once in Blue Moon DK. Um, that'll be in the shop. Do we have any encouragement on mohair? Yes, yes, but I don't think you can see it. It's up high. It's at the top. Yeah. You can see it either. So if you wanted to, you could make this exact hat. Yeah. Because we have the encouragement on mohair. Yeah, we'll have that available. Um, we're hoping, what do we got forthcoming in the shop? More minis will be coming soon. Mm -hmm. More mini sets. We hope to be developing some new colorways. And yeah, and then we're hoping to get some more single play in to dye up some new colors. Yes. Yeah. And um, of the repeatable um, minis, if any of them do really well, then we will definitely um, put more up in the shops. So. Yeah, we have lots of uh, undyed minis that we're sort of planning on what to do with. So this is sort of our first rollout yeah. of that, and we're really excited. Yeah, um, I really like dyeing minis. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> they're so satisfying. Yeah, and they're fun to experiment with as well. Yeah, so. yeah. Lots of different options, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I guess that is that. We will get all this prepped and ready for Wednesday. For Wednesday. At 6 p.m. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Well, so I guess that's it. That's it. So um, thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Uh, we hope that you are safe and healthy and uh, we're really enjoying doing this and we love reading your comments and um, and sharing our what we're making with you. Um, and we hope that uh, you find our podcast inspiring and it encourages you to um, pick up your knitting and get some stitches in. And uh, thank you for subscribing and for liking our videos. And we'll see you all next week. Yes. All we right. hope you have a good week. Yeah, we hope you have a good week. And we'll talk to you next